Okay. We're transitioning. Alright, you, you're streaming audio, right? Uh, Mike? yeah. Alright, is it balanced? Do you know if it's okay? Uh, my voice might be a little loud, actually. Let me turn it down. Oh, I'll quick. tell you. <coughs> nice. Uh. Hello. Uh, I got the, I got the co uh, commentator. Yeah, cool. Uh, you you could do with turning us up a little bit, Val. Other than that, you should be solid. All um, right. Uh. Val, are you dropping frames? No. I'm just. No, you're not. No, I'm all typing out of the game and it freezes the game. Oh, okay, you scared the shit out of me, dude. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna turn you guys up in here. Here. So, Milk, is there like a hitbox stream for low latency, or I just look at the mainstream and try uh, to oh, deal yeah. with the latency? I'll, uh, I'll PM you the stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sweet, thank you, Reek. Alright, hold up. Go up talk, say something real quick. Whoa, Hello. it's poppin', brother. Alright, that should be better. I think. Okay. Uh... Do this real quick. And then... Testing. Testing. Okay. Testing. Yeah. Oh, sorry, you can hear me. Yeah. Um... I think I have everything. <coughs> Alright, tell me whenever you're ready, Val, and I'll start the timer. Alright, um... Alright, uh, three, two, one. Alright, so this is Ed and Nitty. Uh, this adventures. It's on PS2, GameCube, and PC. Uh, so in this first it's game. It's also available for Xbox. Yeah. In this first game, uh, you gotta collect ice cubes to turn on the machine. You guys push me, and I will smash the wood with my hand. And this scam is, um, consists of a lot of RNG elements. Probably one of the most, um, RNG places in the entire run. But fortunately, um, it's not that long, so it's easily, like, resettable. Yeah. Without costing too much time. Normally these ice cubes, whenever they get out of the coolers they can just bounce wherever they feel and you saw that happening a little bit with the first two yeah you just gotta be careful and just to make sure they don't hit the ground too many times And right here we have the squirrels, which are also pretty RNG. Their positioning is almost 100% RNG. So if you get bad squirrel locations, you have to reset in a normal RTA run. But usually um, the RNG is pretty decent most of the time. Also another thing to mention, uh, on GameCube, uh, the RNG is always the same. So uh, if even though the loads are slower, it's more consistent to get a good a good skim one on GameCube. Yeah, and also the pigs coming up here are also really consistent on GameCube, while on the other versions they are entirely random. Like sometimes you only have to throw in one pig and the other two run in, sometimes you have to throw in all three. Ideally, you just grab one and the other two would already be in the pin. You just have to throw one around the front and they go in. 
And also, if you have the camera pointed towards the pigs, they're more likely to run towards or away from you, depending on where they're facing. And that also goes for the same with the squirrels we talked about previously. So, this is Game 2, we're sneaking into a birthday party, we're going through the sewers. Um, coming up is escape that sometimes whenever, if you do it wrong, you won't have control of the edge, so you just have to jump back down and do it again. It's not that hard, but it's just annoying when it happens sometimes. Yeah, it's pretty consistent, you just have to be careful um, not to move too much once you're on top of the platform and then you should be fine. I've only had, um, I've only messed that skip up a few times due to, um, not stopping properly. So it's usually pretty consistent. Oh yeah, if you run into walls, you punk, and there's a thing you can do called battery head cancelling, where if you, uh, come out of battery head the same frame that you would normally bonk and get knocked down, uh, it instantly cancels the animation but it's not very consistent. If you take damage while you're battered... No, it's... Oh, my bad, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Ah, okay. Yeah, I was I was just gonna say, it was a two-frame window to get battered cancel, so it's not really RTA viable, but if it happens, it's pretty cool. Also, another thing that can happen while you're battering, if you get uh, hurt, like, right as you're going to the battered, you get a consistent battered cancel whenever you come out of it. That's some good thing to know. It helps whenever you're trying to kill things fast, like kill alligators and stuff in the sewers fast. Yeah, and battery is pretty much used everywhere in the run because it obviously makes you run a lot faster and grants you invincibility for as long as you're doing it. There's no cooldown, there's no timer or anything, just until you like hit a wall or you stop it manually. And right here, um, in runs, you can do a clip that skips this entire section, but it's really inconsistent and not marathon safe at all, but it's a pretty cool clip. Saves it's like, probably one of the hardest clips in the entire game. Yeah, it saves like about a minute, and it's really annoying because it's so easy to mess up, and it, once you get it, it's like you can PB so easily if you get it fast. Yeah, and it's not consistent either, so you just gotta keep trying it and hopefully it'll work for you. Like, you can, you can get it first try, you can get it after you go do this one thing called FPC clip or FPS clipping, and you can get it after either one time, you can get it after ten times, it's just completely random. So, we're in the backyard now, we're beating up some pinatas. And after this, there's like a short mini game that we have to do. Uh, it's kind of slow and annoying. And also, a funny story. Um, one time when I was doing a run of this game, um, the game glitched out and said I beat all three pinatas when I only did two. So, it's a form of skipping, but I have no idea how it happened, and it's never happened ever again. Also, um, I don't, I don't really remember the names of the Kanker sisters. Oh, I just died there. Oops. Whatever. It's not too much time lost. <coughs> I remember... Yeah, the... Uh, Go ahead. So, one of the Kanker sisters shoots her kisses a lot faster than the other. And that's just something to note. If you get bad RNG there, you can die easily if you're not paying attention. Yeah, and during that section, you also have to multitask a lot. You have to beat down the beehives, and you have to also attack the canker sisters at the same time.
And also here in this section, there's a skip you can do called Jimmy Skip, which involves doing a first person clip through one of the walls. But it's not RTA viable yet because the wall you have to clip through is very thick and it makes the clip very inconsistent, a lot more inconsistent than Scam 2 clip. There's another version you can do where you do your trample ed next to the tree and one of the eds clips clips through the wall but that's harder because you have to stand in a certain spot and be facing a certain way it's just not useful really but it's pretty cool there's another clip you can do here that's really easy to do on gamecube but for some reason extremely hard on pc and i have no idea why yeah whenever yeah whenever the devs made the port of this <coughs> game um, the GameCube version is slightly different from all the others, and it has some very minor physics differences. But they're minor enough um, that they make some battered clips impossible or really hard to do. Oh, that was a weird camera. I don't think that's ever happened before. So you can do a tractor clip here, but I don't really want to do any clips that I know I can't do, uh, like fast in a marathon. So it's not too much to just go around. Here, coming up is a uh, Kevin game skip. In this game, you basically throw squirrels and trash cans to do a bunch of stuff, but you can just clip double D out like that and come over here and do it again sometimes better red clips are weird and they don't work but I got it second try so that's okay so I had to jump and the... doing that skips a really sometimes inconsistent mini game where you have to like knock down cans but the thing about that is that the physics are sometimes inconsistent and it may not always work fast so it's pretty cool we could skip that yeah. This should work. Oh, oh my gosh. My, my. <coughs> Alright, so that's the first part of Scam 3 done. So here, uh, Eddie ate a, uh, he ate, he ate a jawbreaker with like foot powder on it. So, that's why he's green. He's ugly. <laughs> We just have to wait for Johnny to move. And the goal of this part is to make it home without any of the other kids seeing you because Eddie looks so hideous. That's a weird thing they can happen. But fortunately, here. um... Oh no, go ahead. Go ahead. That's a weird thing that can happen here, where it's like that camera angle. Sometimes you can make it through this opening without having to stop, but I don't like doing that because I bonk 90% of the time. And at this part of the scam, there's no real skips you can do. There's a cu minor cutscene skip that you can do with Naz. Um, but like Valvin said, it's easy to bonk. So you gotta practice it a bit until it's consistent. And you don't have- you can't see the eds either, so it makes it that much easier to bonk. It's actually really hard but to do. But this scam is pretty straightforward. What I just did was pretty hard to do when I first started learning the game. Was, uh, jump around her. Uh, but that's the end. That last thing I did was, uh, <coughs> you just batter it while he's facing away from you. It's really hard though, because sometimes he just, he can see you even though he's not facing you. And coming up next is probably one of the glitchiest scams in the entire game. It has like the most amount of clipping and AI manipulation and such. Oh man. Eddie didn't follow me, so I'm gonna... Okay, whatever. Eddie got stuck at the beginning, so... Hit it when it happens. Oh my.
This beginning isn't really so, that. This beginning part really isn't that broken yet. Um, until we get a little bit later into the level. I'm not gonna be doing uh some of the clips because if I mess them up, I lose a lot of time. And even though they're apparently really easy, I'm the only person that can't do them. So that's no fun. Here, just come over here, flip the switch. We got to a short mini game with whack a mole. Ah, oh, okay, whatever. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he got stuck again. And there's a pretty cool skip you can do with the whack-a-mole game that pretty much skips all of it depending on how fast you get it. But the clip is could be it can be inconsistent at times and annoying to deal with. But it does save a really good chunk of time if you get it fast. I don't think I'm gonna do that because it's I don't really do that and it's really annoying. So I'm just gonna do the whack-a-mole game. Basically you just do an FPC clip, which is just mashing triangle or Y or Z, depending on what platform you're on, and it clips one of the Eds through a wall. I don't, I don't remember who it was on by, but I'll show it off a little bit in Skim 6. I believe I was the person who found that. It's a pretty cool skip. I just have to wait for this door to open, because you only have to get 10. <laughs> if you get all 15, uh, it opens the door to get a jawbreaker. And that is useful for 100%, where you have to get all the jawbreakers. <laughs> the main category ran in this game is any percent, because it you, there's no requirement to... You don't have to collect anything in the levels, you just have to beat them. Uh, in all scams, you have to get uh, costumes to unlock certain levels. Uh, here is this is something I found, or me and Kona found, kind of, but I figured out a consistent way to do it. You get it's kind of annoying to do sometimes, but basically, you just have to run double D up to the door. And have Eddie jump over the gate because you can't jump on you can't jump on another Ed's head. And doing this manipulates the AI into turning around while in midair, which is pretty cool. You get them in a position where they want to turn around, but they also have to jump over something. And doing so would clip him behind the gate a little bit and fall through. There we go. So he got over the gate, skipping an end, uh, power cell portion of the level. <coughs> so I, hope I hope I can get this. Uh, the, same, the thing you can do called first cycle of victory. And almost got it. He hit the wall. Whatever. Two isn't that bad. Two is pretty good. One cycle saves like a few seconds though. <coughs> so now here's the Kevin race. Basically, you just have to run around the course without falling off. You get a couple seconds head start, and if you batter it, you there's no way to lose. So you just have to go around the course. Yeah, and this part is pretty boring during a run. We've tried to find ways to skip it, but nothing has been successful yet. Yeah, this entire course is like roughly like it's like a minute and a half or so. But it's basically just going in circles on things and you get to listen to this amazing music for that long. In your dreams. The best music. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so that's Scam 4. Uh, coming up is Scam 5. This scam actually has a history. Um, so at the beginning of the game, SpongeCube uh, routed out Scam 5 and everyone else 
I was like, okay, yeah, let's do this. And then this used to be one of the longest skims. And now, um, you kind of just have to do a bunch of stuff to do things. And that's the end of skim 5. Okay. Now we're on to this game 6. We have this little black bar on the top and bottom of the screen. Uh, it's just going to be there until we get to the end of game 6. It, it's kind of annoying, but you have to deal with it. Oh, I hit no on accident. Yeah, and on the topic of scam 5 skip, that saves about roughly 5 minutes of in-game stuff. That's pretty boring and dangerous to run at times. So that's a pretty big achievement for the community. <laughs> it was a, it was the work of a couple people. Originally, Mildew and Kona were the people to figure out that, oh hey, you can get out of bounds and manipulate Double D onto the table. And then I started running this game, and I was like, oh hey, you can jump on this table and jump around a barrier. I wonder if you can get to the end of Skim 5. And that's how it kind of happened. And originally you'd have to collect items for the Canker Sisters and they would move out of the way as you got the items. But the game developers did not disable the saw being activated. They never got rid of that trigger. So if you're able to get behind the Canker Sisters and avoid like their zone of killing you, then you can just operate on the saw if you're close enough to it. So there is a little bit of a demonstration of a little bit of FPC clipping. Just a little bit there. I have to wait for them to go around. Dang, okay. Okay, so I just skipped the first power cells of this level. Now I have to be really careful because if I die, I will spawn behind that gate and I have to do that clip again. So I'm not gonna do this because I die sometimes whenever you skip turning this off. And this game does have a checkpoint system, but there's no visual indicator as to, um, when you get a checkpoint, so you never really know if you're gonna respawn behind the gate or not. Cause but usually you just have to be careful. <laughs> yeah, if you get far enough ahead, like sometimes you can skip checkpoints without even knowing it, which is really annoying because uh, you can be all the way up here and you can. Oh my gosh, Star needs to die. I don't want to get hit. Um, you can be past this gate in front of me, like up here, and you won't get a checkpoint for some reason. Uh, and if you die. Oh no, don't happen. Okay, we're good. You can be past this gate up here, and it won't give you a checkpoint, and it will spawn you all the way at the beginning, and it loses a lot of time. Also, there's a good, there's a really annoying section of the part of the game coming up. It's called Spider Egg. It's probably my least favorite section of the game. Just Everyone hates that section. Yeah, uh, there's a thing I do, it's like a lot safer, and it's not that much slower, I don't think. Um, basically, I take double D, I leave all the other heads there. It's only faster, or it's only not slower if I get a good spawn, which normally happens. And then I just go to the, right here, I hit all these down. As I hit that one down, I fall into the water. Alright, I got a good spawn. That's good. Nice. <coughs> and doing it the risky way involves um, getting off of the Tower of Eddie at every island and defeating all the enemies while you're on the way there. Oh, that's no good. I got hit by a tire. Whatever. It's not that, it's not that bad. Uh, and you, whenever and you get the off, reasons why. Whenever you get off of the Sorry. tower, no, it's okay. Whenever you get off of the tower of Eddie on the islands, um, it's really weird because they kind of just fall on top of each other and push each other everywhere, and they won't fall off like necessarily if they're just sliding by themselves. But if you switch to them and they're sliding, they will fall off. So that's just something to note. Also, you're gonna see me move a little bit faster whenever I pick up the spider egg because. Oh no. The, this is spider egg. 
ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay. Third try. So yeah, you have um, the really bad mud physics, which send the Eds in unpredictable directions at times if you get off a of Tower Vetti. And the tire swings also have really oversized hitboxes. So you have to be very careful when going through this area. And even when you are, sometimes you just get unlucky. <coughs> oh my. Okay. So this is <laughs> probably the worst spider egg I've had in a while. Um, it's just kind of me being not careful enough, kind of, but it's it's whatever. For some reason, never, the the side that's facing you, I feel like it has a bigger hitbox just because you can't see the front of the heads, and it's really awkward to time stuff. Sometimes, if you get hit on the very edge of this thing and an head falls in, which happened actually, you have to do the entire thing. So whenever you pick up, whenever you hold objects, you move a lot faster in this game. So the way back is not nearly as scary as coming to get the egg. If I fall with the spider egg in my hand, they will the spiders will spawn out of the egg and I have to deal with them on the way back. So this is actually a jawbreaker for Jimmy. So here's the map piece. There we get and the black bar is gone. And the reason you have the black bars on screen is because um, the game never intended for you to leave a level while you're in a cutscene. And that's pretty much what you're doing in Scam 5. Yeah, so it just keeps in until you go into another cutscene. And that's the earliest cutscene that you can get. Without like going into another scam. Okay, so this is a second victor fight. Uh, you can actually one cycle Victor too, but I've only done it once uh, while I was practicing, and I like freaked out. I wasn't streaming, I don't think, so it was really sad. Right, I have to make sure I hit no here. Okay, did that. Okay, got the last map piece. So now we are in to the canker battle part, where we just have to basically get through a bunch of uh, big obstacle course and avoid dying <coughs> to random things. I think this timer here is different than it is on GameCube. I know for the Kevin game it is because um, the Kevin game skip, if you mess it up like once or twice on GameCube, you might as well just like not finish the level because the timer is going to run out. Also, it's really easy yeah, to die PC. in this room just because of... Yeah, on PC the timer is operate slowly. Yeah. It's also really easy to die in this room just because of how many dogs there are. But you get enough health <coughs> from them. Just to get all these things flipped and then more tire swings. And the final boss coming up is um, not too much of a boss fight as much as it is like throwing stuff at pillars and batterating into them. It pretty much reuses like stuff you've already sort of done before, such as like knocking the boards down, scam four, and batterating into poles. And while you're doing that, you have to avoid um, the canker sisters trying to kiss you. And if you get hit, um, you drop whatever item you're holding, and it may become damaged. Sometimes that happens, like, where you throw it, but it barely doesn't hit it, so it just doesn't work. Yeah, the hitboxes can be weird sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so, time's gonna be coming up after I hit the fourth pillar. <coughs> I'm gonna need you to give me, like, a vocal thing. I, yeah, I got, I, I got it. And I just keep getting hit with kisses, dude. <laughs> and time. 
All right, my boy, you got a 2755. How how does it feel? It's, uh, I feel underestimate. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, man. Thanks, family. Um. If we have enough time, I'm just gonna show off something real quick. We're gonna show uh, off the legendary stance. We, we, Dude, we got yes. a little bit of time. All right. So. Something I figured out a while ago is you can make it. You can go into Eddie's Tower of Eddie, and then if you do some certain inputs, you can make them do this, which is pretty weird. It's, it has no uses, but it looks pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> it's pretty sick. Mm, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, then, uh, we're, we're gonna go to intermission and stuff. Thank, thanks for being a good coin. No problem, bud.